Thanks for joining us on the program. Now, the Senate has urged the federal government to introduce a food stamp program as a short-term measure to cushion the effect of the food crisis across the country. The upper legislative chamber also called on the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security to liaise with development partners and other relevant stakeholders, especially the Lagos Food Bank Initiative, which introduced temporary food assistance program a few years ago. The resolutions followed a motion follow, um, sponsored by the Senate Chief Whip, Senator Aline Dume. Let's listen. Accordingly, resolve to urge the federal government to introduce the Nigerian version of food stamps program as an interventionist measure to cushion the effect of food insecurity shortage in the country. Mandate the Federal Ministry of Agriculture to liaise with development partners and other relevant stakeholders. The Lagos Food Bank Initiative, which introduced Temporary Food Assistance Program, TEFAP, a few years ago. Mr. President, some of the demonstrations and protests that I have seen outside there. Well, let's hear from uh, the senator himself who was on that floor uh, making these proposals have now been joined by the Senate's uh, Chief Whip, Senator Ali Dume, he is the senator representing Borno South Senatorial District, and of course, he was also a one-time uh, Senate leader. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Senator Ali Dume. Thank you. Well, Nigerians are enthusiastic about this, your proposal for uh, a food stamp. But of course, we've also seen others saying that we have to be careful uh, so that uh, the program doesn't get enmeshed in what uh, it's happening in the well, U.S. where there's a problem of eligibility and sometimes people could actually tamper with this program and divert it in such a way that it doesn't get to exactly those who really need it. How are you working to ensure that we get a balance if we are getting this uh, program into Nigeria? Well, let me say first of all that I'm not into the nitty-gritty. Nitty-gritty can be taken care of by the experts, and we have a lot of them out there that we can borrow. In fact, the U.S. itself, the U.S. government itself will be willing. The World Bank will be willing. All other development partners will be willing to address the issue of hunger. Uh, <coughs> uh, CH, Cadet the Harmonize, is, is an organization that provides... It actually came out with a figure, scaring figure, that two, about 26.5 million Nigerians in 2024 will face the challenge of food insecurity. And as far as I'm concerned, the food insecurity can be worse than the banditry and all these uh, security threats that we find along. So uh, it's very important for government to uh, embrace any, uh, any way. And one of the best ways is the food stamp. It was introduced in the United States in 1939. Up to date, the only thing they do is to try to improve on it. Mm -hmm. And oh, because definitely. of what the social this thing attached to it, they now change the name to SNAP. Yeah. Supplementary uh, nutrition, you know, nutrition assistance, program. assistance program. And But in any way, this is better than what we are doing. That is the cash Conditional cash, Conditional transfer. cash transfer. And you keep on pumping money into it and you don't see the result. But this one is simple. And it can be started tomorrow. Tomorrow, if you say, well, let's do it, it can be done. How, how do you get the database? It's not of data. The yeah, that is why you get the need wrong. It. We are not talking about data. We are talking about people. All the data they are using now is fake. Most of it is fake. What data do you need than you have your identity card? If you don't have a national identity card, you will have a BVN. If you don't have BAVN, you have a proof. And you can go to your local locality. Nobody will go out and fake uh, the issue of food to collect food. The Borno State government is doing its own, but not the, uh, the way. But the governor, you can see, whenever he gets money on the monthly or in interval basis, they issue out tokens, tokens. If they go to a town or village, they announce that tomorrow food will be distributed. People will come out and collect their ration. I think the day before yesterday, they did the same thing. So when you get the token, then you go to where you will now submit the token uh -huh. and collect food. Well, collect food. So now, if the government gives you the token for a valued amount, then you go to the market. 
designated places where a food stamp can be accepted. It's just like where you use credit card or where you use POS, whether you use this thing, they will write it there that uh, so 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 is being is acceptable. You go there, collect a you know, either is a cup of gari, a cup of rice, and then you issue out you, instead of paying with money. That is the most effective way. I'm not saying that the conditional cash transfer com should be completely abandoned. All right. But if you introduce food stamp, you will see it. You will see the result immediately. So they should go hand in glove. Yes, hand in glove. But okay. that of uh, the food stamp is not the issue of, or of course, there will be people that will tap what corners, steal some part of it, but not as simple as stealing money. Now, when they say you are doing data, when you see data, you will see somebody's name. They will put foul name. If you get, uh, you say Kaza. If you say Kaza to an Englishman, <laughs> he will think it's a name. But Kaza is actually foul. And then he will transfer uh, money to foul account. That is what they do. But if you say Kaza, in, in terms of food stamp, that Kaza must go and collect food. All right, so there has to be a physical presence by the person. Uh, but, of course, you will know that there are instances in this country where there are hard-to-reach communities and there are very poor people there who are not known to... Uh, government organizations that much. How do you intend to see community leaders also being integrated into this? <laughs> so me, that there will be a direct relationship? Well, where there is will, eh? these things are easy and doable. It may not be foolproof, you know, for, for, you know, fraud proof, but it's doable. Let me give you an example. Recently, the federal government assisted us, the uh, uh, politicians or let's say legislators, for me, for example, the senators, 200 million for palliative. And because of my relationship with people, I've been able to procure over 30,000 bags of maize and rice. As I'm speaking to you now, every pooling unit, I have 1,708 pooling units in my senatorial districts, nine local government. There is nowhere that this food did not reach. 10 bags per pooling unit. You understand? Uh, our security agents in the bureau, our uh, civil servants, mechanics, and we did the template. And it was easy. And I didn't go myself. But it went everywhere. And then I had my, our students, we, we have students, you know, for, and I said, OK, these people will not compromise. So I formed a monitoring committee. And they were monitoring everything. And people knew everything got to the down. So if the government is committed, and buys into this idea. It is doable. And you will see the result. Well, Senator Ali Ndume, a lot of people are hungry in this country. And your proposal is for low income or no income at all yes. citizens. Yes. What that happens to those who are actually in some like form you, of eh? income? No, well, no, not no, me. No, no, no. Uh, people <laughs> are, who are actually in <coughs> some income, like civil servants who are uh, uh, on, uh, uh, you, you find out the wages that they are on, minimum wage, but they are not able to exist. They are 30,000 can't afford a bag of rice. So what will happen to those kind of people? Yeah, it's part of the agreement. And that's why I say low income. The low income depends on definition of the government or the cutoff point. Maybe I was thinking that anybody that is below level seven okay. should be a beneficiary. Okay. And what you give to a level seven officer in terms of food stamp should be less than what you give to level six, level five, and level three, level four, in that manner. And for non-income, as I told you, these people, uh, they, you can reach out to them easily. Even if you say you, you can buy food and directly and distribute it to them, like the way Borno State government is doing. Or you can line them, uh, you can give them food stamp and tell them, you know, ask them to go there, use that food stamp to collect food in that area. Well, For in, example. In, in the U.S., they go to supermarkets, actually. Yes, they, they go, go to, to supermarkets, supermarkets and you and present it, and then yeah. they, they do it. And it's working. It has been working for, from t nine, uh, 1939 to date, is how many years? It's, it's a long, as yeah, I said, I mean, you close, can't... Close to uh, a I, century, actually. Yeah, when I was in the U.S., I, there was this case of Nigerians that, you know, we Nigerians, how we do <laughs> <laughs> they will go and collect a food stamp and then go around again. There is another Nigerian that buys the food stamp. Interesting. So you can't prove that one. But once they catch them, so normally they deport them and all that. So yeah. in Nigeria, you will have ACEs. But I still believe that this is going to, this is, if introduced, is going to be better 
than this conditional cash transfer. Yeah, but people have to be you captured. You can see. In this no, it's if not they are not captured, they could go back and take it no, over and no, over no, again. No, no, how do you no, 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 how no. do you prevent one person no. from collecting the food stamp Wait ticket now. over and over? Let me tell you, when you go and do election in those days, even. A simple way because uh, INEC doesn't want you to uh, do multiple voting. Once you collect, they put uh, this thing. An ink. Unless you mm. want to cut just your finger, it will be there. <laughs> so, so there are ma so many measures that you can take in order to avoid this. But you cannot totally eliminate it. I still believe it's better than this transfer that you send a lot to people. Number one, it will not go down because there are some villages out there that they don't, don't have banks, they don't have POS, they don't have BVN, they don't have anything. But, as I said, if food stamp is introduced, you can now start with the food or even make it available on a weekly basis. Now the federal government can say, okay, we buy food and each local government will give you so-so amount. Like now, the, Mr. President is a very reactive. Anytime some things like this happen, he tries to do whatever he can do. He's, he, you know, before the end of 2023, he sent a supplementary budget, you know, warped some monies from Iowa, put it together, gave the states certain amount of money. You don't see anything. After that, with this supplementary budget, got 800 million from U.S. and they say transfer, transfer, and they use a lot of grammar, <laughs> nothing. Now, we, uh, the, the, because of the pressure everywhere, ah, if you say you are going to do only workers, all the all the whole federal federal workers are not up to two million. But the people that are exposed to hunger are, by statistics is 26.5 million. The World Bank, fortunately, the World Food Program is. Is you know is the presence is everywhere in Nigeria, especially, yeah, especially in, in the northeast. Actually. In the northeast, in the Bay State, Borno, Adama, and Yobe, and they are doing a wonderful job. And what do they do? They go to house to house, register people, give them uh, tokens every time they have where they want to go and uh, collect uh, food. In fact, they have like now, the state government. Uh, since this thing is even on the concurrent, the state government can have warehouses in each of the local government. And, and, ask and those warehouses won't be looted. No, no, no. <laughs> that's the, in my village, we have one so many in my... In, in, in not only will loot itself, because these people... People will not agree. Like in Goza, when they bring uh, trailers of food, sometimes the World Food Program will not have anywhere to... And they, know, they have a date to distribute the food. Right. People will wait. And they will come with their cats. But of course, you know, some, they will, give, they will write uh, five for them. Uh, they will use pen to adjust uh, that uh, five to eight. That's fraud. <laughs> so it's <laughs> that can Out of the hunger. And, and of course, that's the problem, actually, with this uh, uh, supplemental uh, nutrition program. Because in the United States, for example, there have been critics who say that it promotes dependency. You make citizens, some segments of the citizens, not to want to work. Because they are perpetually on the food no, stamp. No, no, that is. How do you prevent that? In well, a it's a negligible part. In fact, we are here. In nobody, nobody. A, a proud Nigerians are proud people. If you can, they can afford it. Have you, in those days have they been shouting like this? No, it's because they are pressed. And let me tell you, had it been uh, the farms, we have general security that low-income people or farmers can go to their farms, these things will not be there. And the prices of food will not be going up. So that's why it's very, very important. And in fact, by the way, that's the purpose of government, security and welfare of the citizens. Yeah. And that's why I've been always critical. Forget about any other thing. Concentrate on security and welfare of citizens. Then you go after everything, any other thing. Even though you become a political enemy to some people in government because of how vocal you become. <laughs> well, and, well. Uh, and also I'm a, a, I'm a political friend to many people. Many Nigerians are supporting me. Yeah, of that's course, definitely. Why, I um, mean, like this proposal, very unique proposal, yeah. I mean. And that's why I continue doing it. Too. I, I keep reminding, you know, you know, because we know each other for a long time. I'm son of nobody. And I became somebody. And I'm 64. What else? Mm. Even our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died at 63, so I'm just enjoying extra time. Yeah, well, so I'm, you're I, not yet I, at the departure lunch like some no, people. No, but I've collected <laughs> my body part on pass already. <laughs> All right, uh, 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 distinguished, let's talk about how people cannot abuse this program potentially. So, 
you may have a situation whereby you give this and then you have some people who will go through the back and buy off this food stamp from very poor people and then maybe use it to go and cash uh, those food and maybe resell. We've seen things happening like that. Just recently, the Nigerian Customs, uh, I think sometime last week, released uh, bags of rice that were being sold for 10,000. 10, yeah. yeah. And people go there, purchase them, and now go out there, rebag them, and sell them. But, how, the bottom, you? But, but the bottom line is, when there's increased supply, the price will go down. That is the nature mm -hmm. of supply and demand, isn't it? That yeah. is number one. Besides number two, Nigerians are not that... Uh, this. Let me be honest with you. Well, you have all these instances here and there. But the more, the, the major objective of what you are doing is what you look at. You cannot have any system that is uh, fraud, uh, fraud proof. I'll give you an instance. There's this story they gave us in when we were growing up that if a, your wife wants to defraud you, and she can do that because she's your wife, she has so many ways. So one stingy husband will sit down and wait and see how the wife distributes food and everything. But yes, she had to find a way of making sure that she gets out of some of it. It's really, but, but, but as I said, the food stamp is the best way to go for now. And it's a temporary measure anyway. All right. Yes. You, you want it to be a temporary measure? Of course. I, I said it in the motion. Yeah. And we can't continue to be feeding people. No. Well, that of the U.S. has been on for close to a century now. Yeah, no, uh, so yeah, if it's ongoing and you're bringing it to Nigeria, uh, no, people want US, to ask you, US, why can't you continue with it? Well, it depends. When they start and see the success of it and the need for it, of course. But I'm saying that it should be subject to review okay. on yearly basis or, or so. And, and the challenge I have with this is that our federal institutions, sometimes I, I just keep wondering what they do if they don't do enough research. If this is working in Borno State through the World Food Programme, and you've seen it and being the, and successful. Said, and How said come the federal st uh, uh, institutions don't replicate this, especially for hard to reach communities who really need this food? Well, the most one of the most unfortunate thing about the current government, which now the, the president or the the, the the era of President uh, Tinubu is trying to reverse, is that the government or the, you know has gone so bad in Nigeria. The political, the judiciary, the executive, these are the main aspects. You know, the corruption has gone eaten so deep in our system where people think only about themselves. They don't care about what happens in the neighborhood, majority. So when you have government that is so personalized and privatized, hmm. and corruption is the order of the day, and you see people that are corrupt, being, you know, hailed or even celebrated by their even community, then you expect this kind of a thing. This is what is happening. Unless this issue of corruption is actually taken up head on, we are not getting anywhere. I have been advocating personally that the Unexplained Wealth Act should be passed or the president should sign on to unexplained wealth uh, mm -hmm. order, executive order. That's if your colleagues don't want to pass it. No, it's not my colleagues now. <laughs> <laughs> you want to set me against my colleagues? Uh, not really. All right, so talk so to us. We have to fight corruption. If we fight corruption effectively, this thing will go. Do you know why dollar went up? They are beating around the bush, going to places, arresting people. No. Mm -hmm. It's because the allocation, the, anytime there is FAC allocation, go and write it down. Dollar will go up. Because people will buy that dollar at any rate. So why don't you look at the problem holistically, you know, realistically, and look at the source? Why is this dollar going up? So many people, including few of us. For me, I don't have visa to anywhere now. So, dollar is not a big deal to me. Are you afraid of a revolution? Which are due to the hunger and anger in the land? No, I told, you, I told you I don't have visa. I believe in Nigeria. I don't have visa to anywhere. If in Saudi Arabia I'm going soon, I will have to apply for visa through the visa and go. So, I'm a Nigerian. I'm concerned. Why would I run to? But some have dual citizenship or even citizenship of three countries. So what they are concerned is to amass more dollars. So in case the country collapses, they will get 
their way out. All right. Uh, Senator Lindome, I'm surprised why you actually introduced this true emotion and not a bill. I no, mean, emotion is just advisory. No, no, no. Yeah, it is uh, advisory. I'll follow the executive it. can choose to accept or not accept it. Why not a bill? I will follow it with a bill. Bill takes time. Mm -hmm. I'll follow it up with a bill. I'm doing studies to see. Uh, first of all, I want to find out, I'm doing it, uh, whether the American government introduced food stamp through a bill or was it by executive action uh, by executive action that's one so if it is through a bill i would want to get a bill from you know get it and go through it and modify it to the nigerian model i'm still trying to trace out the individual because that of the lagos food bank was yes, an initiative yes. of an individual somebody called abolade or something i want to look for the guy and get some ideas and some experts have um, have started contacting me already. So if it comes to bill, I will do it. But I believe that the government will act because this government is responsive. Okay, so as we try to round off this uh, conversation, uh, Senator Lin Dume, talk to me about other uh, efforts by the legislature to actually support the executive on all the social intervention programs. Because that's one of the strongest parts <coughs> of the APC and its manifesto since 2015 when yeah, it came the into power. The but how come does it look like we seem to be losing ground? No, no, Your no. party is losing ground. No, you could no, see no, the corruption no, that was there. emerging no. in the humanitarian no, ministry Shagari, because of all of this. Don't go there because, you see, I came here because of you, as I said. Yes. But I, because it seems that this uh, Arise TV is anti-APC. No, so well, not anti-APC, but mm -hmm. we try to provide no, no, uh, has, issues from a, a perspective that's acceptable to all Nigerians. <laughs> and then we're putting this... Government. Look, it's because you are my friend. I, my, Ravi, Rufai. Oh, okay. Uh, my be, colleague in Lagos. Uh -huh, your colleague in Lagos <laughs> and uh, oh, my senior brother, uh, uh, Ruben Abati. Ruben, all are my friends, but I know they are, they are anti-APC. <laughs> Not of, really. Uh, no, Maybe they try to... But let me go back to oh, this, okay, okay. Uh, as you said. We have been given the cooperation. Remember... When uh, President Tunubu took over, immediately, what one of the first thing, first bills he sent to the National Assembly was the social, um, uh, this thing, um, what do you call it, social In investment uh, program initiative, uh, pro program initiative to amend the bill because he has seen the the, the, the defects in it was introduced by Shagar. I had a personal bill to that, you know, social investment program b bill. Yeah, I know so, you've been very passionate about so poor very people passionate. Right from So we give, we give all the cooperation. Anything that has to do with social investment, we react immediately. Unfortunately, an incident happened, the better uh, incident. That now forced Mr. President to suspend her, set up an investigation. EFCC are working on it. And as you know, to investigate something, it's very difficult, and it's not something that you can do within two hours. Or it's, if it is something that, like, the, you took uh, something and you swallow it, then you can do X-ray to see where the thing is in your stomach. You know, but this one investigation is it will take a, a long time. And the Nigerian system, the EFCC, everybody is handicapped, and our law is defective. I totally support that in case of accusation of amassment of illegal wealth, the burden of proof should be on me if I'm the accused. Mm. If I have certain suspected assets or money, I should prove where I get it. Otherwise, I lose it. That would have been better. But if you say I must prove that somebody has stolen, then that would take forever. All right, so just before I let <coughs> you go, uh, Senator Alain Dume, uh, there have been talks here and there among Nigerians that maybe the suspension of the social investment program due to the investigation you talked about could have also necessitated this outcry of hunger in the land. Could it be that the social investment program was working at some certain level and now that it was suspended, several people are crying out there there's so much hunger because the very poor of the poor, the poorest of the poor are unable to even get those little things they used to get before. That, um, let me say that it is more of inflationary, you know, hyperinflation that happened. Price of products, you know, have gone up. But if you go to our markets, you still find gari, you find rice, you find, you know, basic food stuff. But the price is high. 
Why is it high? It's because most of our people in the top mode class, they exploit the system. After harvest, we didn't have drought. We didn't have so much flood. We had a bump, bumper harvest. So all these people went go and buy off all this and stock it up in their stores, waiting for the price to go up. And that will go up. A couple with the fact that, as I said, the price of basic necessities is tied to uh, dollar. And they squeeze the, bola, the dollar market. This is a kind of vicious click, you understand? And it's business. Well, they when you say it's a click, who are those members of the click? Most of the arise people. <laughs> 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 All right, Senator Dube. Well, uh, and, uh, very quickly, also, uh, a court ruled that there should be a price control board. And uh, that, that price control board, which had been in existence uh, and before transformed into an act, is not being implemented by the Minister of uh, Trade and Industry, which used to be uh, Minister of Commerce in those days. Do you think that a bill or some sort of legislation could actually help? Do we really need a price control board? Uh, since you say, I mean, people just uh, fiddle with uh, these uh, prices here and well, there. Well, honestly, I don't want to speak from, I want to have a background of knowledge on issues. I want to speak less of that. But I, ordinarily, you can't determine what I'm going to sell my product that I labored for. It's not fair. And but when people hoard it to increase the no, price. No, but if people are hoarding it, it's a different thing. Uh, when the supply is too much, you can go and hoard it there. Nobody will... Uh, Nobody, nobody, will, nobody, nobody will buy it. And unless you have money to, to keep like that, you will have to sell it out. And as I said, the law can do uh, something. But I'm saying that there should be control. And that is, I am happy I'm hearing that the CBN, for example, because everything is tied to dollar. Yeah, 90% of what we, con what we take, but the elites. But... Gary is not important. Beans is not important. The rice, we have it even locally. The foreign rice and the, foreign of the, the local rice compete in the market. Their price of this thing is there. Right. Uh, uh, and yam is not important. So why are you tying the price of uh, yam, gari, guinea corn, millet, uh, this is sorghum, to dollar? <laughs> well, maybe some people are exporting it <laughs> to other countries. And of course, it's... Uh, Making uh, you know more farmers want to export rather than to sell uh, locally. No, they sell. They now try <laughs> to move our product across our far mm -hmm. border. But that too has to do with our dollar, uh, our naira value. The naira has fallen against far. So those businessmen find it more profitable to take our, our products like uh, rice, even guinea corn, or most of products from Nigeria. If they sell it there, they pay them in Sefa. And then when they come back to Sefa against Naira, they get more Naira than the Sefa. So uh, just yes or no, or just uh, you just give us a time frame. Uh, how, how soon do you think this food stamp program can, can begin? I don't know. I'm not in the executive. I've done the bill. It's advisory, as you said. It's left for the government to accept or to implement or to even do something about it. But it's just an idea.